Hello, this is Victor. I'm here now with the game 3 on the Green Knight team tournament. So this time we play against Dark Angels and Space Marines Back Templars. And at the end of this report I will do also a redox of the tournament. So first of all, these are the lists that our opponents play. So from Dark Angels we have a Librarian level 2 with Divination in Terminator armor. Then we have 5 Death Wind Terminators. One have the Plasma Gun and then they have a mixture between Assault and Tactical Terminators. Then a Death Wind Latin Rider that is a transport of the Death Wind Terminators. And 5 Sniper Scouts. Then on the side of the Space Marine Black Templars. There is a Master with Terminator and Storm Shield and Thunder Hammer. Five Assault Terminators. If I remember well, there were um, three Thunder Hammers and two Lightning Clouds. Then one Land Rider and six Sniper Scouts. As you can see, it's a Terminator Force, but because you cannot use a special. Um, characters then you can you cannot unlock the terminator as troops and you have to use scouts as troops and then use the terminators as elites so the mission for this third game was the primary big guns never tire we play six objective two in each deployment zone and then the other four are in the area uh, in the middle of the battlefield out of any deployment zone. Then we have the relic that is placed in the middle of the battlefield and the middle of the battlefield is that ring that you see there in the picture, the big building you see there in the middle of the table. And then we have also slain the warlord, two points because we have two warlords per and side. Then first blood and line breaker. Deployment is vanguard strike. So we deploy in diagonal and we have we cannot use reserve because this is is not we only can use reserve on flyers in all this champ in all this tournament and we use infiltrate with the crudes and the stealth suits we win the initiative and we deploy using our uh, we decide to have the terrain with this with a big building so in that picture you can see better the deployment so we select to have this corner of the battlefield. So we deploy the fire warriors in this big building in our deployment zone. Then I deploy the terminators around the, the hammerhead. So the, the hammerhead is capturing the objective in that um, that is close to him in the in in London's body. So he will move a little bit ahead and capture the objective. And then on the other side of the building we deployed the broadsides and the pathfinders and the strike squad. Of course, the Storm River is in reserve because it's a flyer. And what our opponents did is they deployed the two line riders just in the opposite side, as you can see in the picture. And the scouts are in the building, in, oh, in, the, in the ruins that are between the two land raiders. So they try to deny one of the flanks. So the enemy's army looks quite powerful, but one of the big drawbacks is they only have two scoring units for that mission. And we have six objectives on the battlefield. So these scouts need to, to move about if they want to score. This is the, why they deploy the scouts there, because they are controlling one objective. So they need to use these terminators to deny all the objectives we may control during the battle. So here we have another picture of the deployment and here in that part of the picture is where we are going to see most of the action during the battle. So we foresee that these two land riders will move forward and then they will assault with the terminators on our lines. So our plan is try to slow down these terminators and try to stick them in combat in the way that they cannot damage all our army and then we can capture the objective while the terminators are not able to dispute or to yeah 
to neutralize any of our objective. In our, in our infiltrators, we decide to deploy the crews just at the back of our opponent's army and then the stealth suits are in the building that is in the middle of the battlefield where we place the relic. They cannot control the relic but they can use from there the fusion RM weapon. First on when pretty fast we don't have almost any shooting that can damage armor 14 so the hammerhead shoot he didn't manage to do any damage we also shoot with the fusion from the stealth suite we didn't did any damage and then what I did is I move my terminators fast to block the advancement of the my opponent's terminators so my idea is use the terminator with the stealth ward try to resist there as long as possible to block them in close combat while the rest of the army can reposition for a shooting after my terminators are dead here we see how our opponents are just measuring to move ahead with the land riders and then of course they move the land riders ahead and they didn't do any damage because they just use the smoke to cover the land riders so in our second turn what we did is we try to move to retire or to move um, away with our roadsides and also with the strike squad I protect the roadsides with my strike squad I pretty happy to sacrifice them if if uh, my squad if by sacrificing my squad I can make the roadsides to survive also my terminators move a little bit ahead just to be ready to receive the charge from the marines terminators the shooting again didn't ma we didn't manage to do a lot of damage I think we only destroyed one of the weapons of the Black Templar uh, land rider and that's all and what I did is I use premonition on the strike squad so now my strike squad can do overwatch at ballistic skill and also have counter attack so here you can see that they are pretty close of course I move ahead because I prefer to be myself who is selecting what squad will engage the terminators and not to give this decision to our opponents here in our picture you see that the, the only unit that we leave uh, um, behind was the pathfinders because we want to use them to mark light the land rider to see if we can focus better and do damage but it didn't work yeah, and as we were expecting, they move ahead again the land rider six inches, they disembark and they charge. So the Black Templars managed to charge on my Terminators, but the Death Wind Terminators didn't manage to charge my strike squad. And this is why. So first they I did overwatch and in my during my overwatch shooting, I managed to kill four of the terminators or three of the terminators so then they was needing about seven or six or seven to be able to charge to, to me and they were they had to charge over difficult terrain so they check and they didn't manage to throw high enough to arrive to my squad so for me it was a pretty win there because uh, yeah i killed three terminators in his assault phase and now in the, in our third turn these terminators are on open field so we will be able to shoot them to death here you can see how the death wind terminators are disseminated so the librarian and two terminators are surviving so this means that I kill three of the terminators in my overwatch shooting Remember that I have premonition I can shoot at my ballistic skill. Then on the close combat of the two units of Terminators or of the Black Templars with my Terminators, if I'm not wrong, I think I managed to kill one of the Terminators. He killed my sergeant, my Justicar with the Thunder Hammer, but the Steph Ward managed to absorb all the damage from the other Thunder Hammer. So we 
I think we draw and we stick in close combat. One thing I forgot to say in turn two, the broadsides ran away of the battlefield. So they had to pass a leadership test because they received some casualties and doing the shooting and they fail on the leadership and run out of the ball. So this was a big miss for a big miss for us that we uh, lost one of the heaviest units we have for shooting. So in our second turn we lost the pathfinders and we lost the broadsides and we give first blood to our opponents. So in this third turn I reposition my um, strike great knights a little bit back to be even farther from the death winds terminator. My here now my objective is try to move to the mid of the battlefield to see if I can capture the relic. And also you can see that the crudes are also moving to the middle of the battlefield and uh, towards the relic. So then we concentrate the shooting on the fusion and the hammerhead on the land rider and we kill the land rider. And all the other shooting was concentrated on the Deathwind Terminators and the Librarian, and we killed them all. In the close combat, my Steph War managed to absorb all the hits from the Thunder Hammers of my opponent, and the other, the, the Lightning Close just didn't manage to penetrate my Terminator armor. So we didn't cause any casualty in, it, in any of the two sides and we just draw and we keep in close combat there. So for me this is a win, so as long as I can stick them in close combat is gaining time for our units to capture the objective, even to grab the relic if it's possible and have time also for my storm river to come from the reserve. Take into account that this is a turn 3 and my storm river didn't arrive again. So this is the third game and in the third game I it only arrived on the fourth turn, so I was not very lucky with my reserve rolls. Here you can see all the fire warriors at the top of these greens. They are protecting one of the objectives and the, from there they have a very nice line of sight to shoot at the terminators. So from there they shoot to the death with terminators that were in front of the land rider at the right of the picture. And again here in the turn of the space marines they didn't move a lot. The scouts just remain the whole game stationary in the objectives that they have in their side of the battlefield and in the close combat again we didn't manage to do any wound in any of the two sides of the combat so we keep in combat. I think they were in combat for three or four assaults so the state war here I pay back the cost of the state ward because I, I managed, I think, to solve about uh, 10 Thunderhammer hits. Here you can see what I was explaining. So, in that ruins, the two units of scouts are hiding far from our shooting, but they're, they're only capturing one object, even from there, they don't have a good line of sight neither. So, we don't care. We give this objective for them as far as we can control two or three objectives from our side. But at turn four, the Templars at the end manage to to kill my Terminators or fail one of the Steph War savings and then the Thunderhammer just end up all my Terminators and they move and assault my Strike Squad. As you can see again, my overwise shooting did some damage on that Terminators and then on our shooting turn with the Firewalls we also did some damage to them. So it's surviving the Master and one of the Terminators. So you know this is after our turn, I think this was after our turn 4, where we also did the shooting, we killed some of the Terminators. My two units of Grey Knights are killed, but yeah, they can kill also the Kuds, but we're still winning the battle because we are controlling two objectives by one controlled by our opponent. You also can see in the picture that the other land rider was uh, was not here neither. It's because my Storm Riven come from reserve 
And then in turn four, I didn't manage to pen the armor, but in the turn five, I managed to pen the armor with my multi melter of the Storm Riven and it explodes. So he wanted the first result was immobilized, but for him, immobilized was not working because he was facing in the wrong direction and he wanted to, to have it mobile. He gambled and asked me to repeat the da and the throw and then a throw of four that plus two means six and the also the other land riders from the death wind blow up we have to take into account that these land riders are not giving points for big guns never tire as they are dedicated transport here you can see my storm ribbon after killing the other land rider we didn't put an arc cutter because the other land rider also explodes in the same position of the previous one and was end of the battle so it made no sense to put any quarter there this was almost at the end of the battle because after the turn 5 the battle was finishing again another picture of the scouts you can see they didn't move from that ruins yeah they hold one of the objectives but we at this moment we were controlling two objectives the one with the fire warriors and another objective controlled by the hammerhead and you can see in the middle of the battlefield we have the Kvuts and the two terminators there So in their turn, the Terminators assault and they make our goods to run away and the battle ends at that point because we throw the dice to see if the battle continues, we throw a 1, so the battle stops at this point. This was a victory from our side because we had the primary objective, big guns never tired, we were controlling two objectives, they were controlling one objective and they killed one heavy support, so we win by points on this one none of which controls the relic and on secondary um, on the tertiary they did first blood and slain the warlord they killed my inquisitor and we did one slain the warlord so at the end in total we won this battle so and then doing a recap on on the on how this army have worked i think we played quite good the game so my i'm quite happy with how my units perform the only thing I, I don't feel is worth it is to have the storm raven so you have 200 points that are not deployed so it's in that battle size that we have 1500 points is quite a big bunch of points that you don't have on the first turn and then yeah if you they don't if not arriving on the second turn you are in disadvantage for too long in the battle I also have to mention that in the second battle we didn't feel comfortable and I think we didn't start with a good mindset and this was reflecting in our tactics and I think because of that, because we were impressed by the army we had in front, we didn't play 100% of our capacity and we are not losing the game. On the other side, if you see in that game, we were very clear how to play against the Terminators, how we need to block them and I think here the mindset was quite focus on the battle and this way I think we did much better in this third game but overall quite happy with the performance of my great knights I think the state ward is paid back in the second battle it makes me to resist in front of the great knight in that battle it makes the terminator to survive three assault turns so I think it was quite good for 20 points I know it's a little bit expensive but you cannot put the storm shield so the only thing to have a little bit more survivability in close combat versus AP2 weapons is to have the stave ward. Then of course the inquisitor with divination powers is a must to have. I think the divination is one of the best decks to have and yeah if you don't like the random power you have, you always can go to presence, that is to repeat, to have to link in your weapons, that is quite good. So overall, quite happy. I think all these restrictions make some armies not to appear. For example, you cannot have a death wind uh, army in that tournament or a raven wind army because you cannot use the special characters. But overall, quite good um, atmosphere on the tournament, very happy on the result win up in middle table 
with a lot of other people with two victories and one loss. So that's all for this report and for that tournament. Thanks a lot for watching and see you again later. Bye!